Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, rising Republican star and the friend everyone ignores in the group text. Greene is known for her history of deranged beliefs, ranging from racist conspiracy theories about Jewish space lasers to supporting calls to execute Democratic politicians. Now, Democrats can't stop her from serving in Congress, and they definitely can't stop her from saying crazy shit. But today they decided to give her just a little less input on running the country. Tonight, House Democrats taking an unprecedented step, voting to strip freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a member of the opposing party, of her committee assignments. She's going to be removed from the House Education and Labor Committee, as well as the House Budget Committee. She's going to be a member of the House of Representatives for the next two years, but she's going to be a member without being able to serve on any of these committees. Yes, people, Marjorie Taylor Greene has been kicked off her committees. But if you think about it, This is a pretty sweet deal for Green. Basically, her punishment for acting insane was to do less work for the same amount of money. And honestly, I think kicking her off these committees could actually backfire. The last thing you want to do with a crazy person is give them time to be crazy. That's why they should put her on all the committees. Then you'll never hear from her again. Excuse me, when are we gonna talk about those Jewish space lasers? Well, no, first we need to discuss the budget for the asphalt acquisitions. Uh, Sharon, do you have the report? I don't know. Do I have time to report, bitch? Oh, come on. I didn't say that. That was Yashiro. So Democrats have made their position on Marjorie Taylor Greene clear, but Republicans are a different story. While some prominent senators have spoken out against her, House Republicans held a meeting last night where they decided to stick with her, or at the very least, look the other way. House Republicans hosted a marathon meeting overnight. There's a lot of questions that have to be answered, and we've got to be able to do that in a family meeting to help bring people back together. Marjorie Taylor Greene, who escaped any punishment yesterday over her very extreme views, including endorsing political violence and anti-Semitic falsehood. Sources say Green was given a standing ovation from half of the members in the room after she expressed remorse for some of her past comments. I think it would be helpful if you could hear exactly what she told all of us, denouncing QAnon. I don't know if I say it right, I don't even know what it is. Um, Any from the shootings, she said she knew nothing about lasers or all the different things that have been brought up about her. Damn, Kevin McCarthy, he's a GOP OG. I didn't hear shit. Didn't see shit, and I definitely don't know shit. Shit. It's truly amazing that this guy acts like he doesn't even know what QAnon is, even after they tried to kill him. I mean, most people would have at least Googled them at that point. Like, eventually, Carol Baskin must have been like, okay, I'll bite. Who is this Tiger King guy? Because, I mean, I should figure this out, right? And it's not like these guys don't have the time to research conspiracy theories. Because when it comes to Hunter Biden, they remember every word like it's the lyrics to their favorite song. The Burisma emails decrypted from the Delaware laptop have been verified by Tony Bablinski. But then ask them about the biggest right-wing cult in the country and they're like, uh, Hunan? Kwahunana? Man, who can keep track of this stuff? But to be fair to Kevin McCarthy, he's far from the only Republican who'd rather look like a dumbass than take a position on Marjorie Taylor Greene and her crazy beliefs. Although some Republicans are a little smoother at it than others. Newly elected Senator, arch conservative from Alabama, Tommy Tuberville tells CNN he doesn't know anything about the Congresswoman because the bad weather kept him from reading the news. It's traveling this weather's been a little rough looking at, looking at any news or whatever. <laughs> really? He hasn't been looking at the news because the weather's been rough? I know it's Alabama, but is this dude getting his news by stagecoach? It's been so stormy, the Pony Express hasn't made it out here with the latest tweets. Clearly, Marjorie Taylor Greene has become a distraction and a liability for the Republican Party, which is maybe why she decided to step up on the floor of the House today and disavow many of her past insane beliefs. When I started finding misinformation, lies, things that were not true in these QAnon posts, I stopped believing it. School shootings are absolutely real. And every child that has lost those families mourn it. I also wanna tell you 9-11 absolutely happened. So that I definitely wanna tell you, I do not believe that it's fake. Ooh, looks like someone started listening to the reasonable voices in her head. Although this woman is so crazy that her saying that 9-11 happened makes me go, wait, 
did it. But hey, I'm glad that she's come around to the standard Republican belief that school shootings are real and that nothing should be done to stop them. But you may not want to give Green too much credit for disavowing these conspiracies, since it turns out she doesn't take responsibility for believing them in the first place. What I did is I started looking up things on the internet and I stumbled across something, and this was at the end of 2017, called QAnon. I was allowed to believe things that weren't true and I would ask questions, questions about them and talk about them. And that is absolutely what I regret because if it weren't for the Facebook book post and and comments that I liked in 2018, I wouldn't be standing here today and you couldn't point a finger and accuse me of anything wrong. Wow. I've never seen someone try to delete their browser history in real life. But yes, you see, it's all Facebook's fault for allowing her to believe in those things. So don't blame her, blame Mark Zuckerberg with his social media lies and his space lasers. And look, man, Marjorie Taylor Greene isn't the first person to believe things that she read on the internet, but her defense isn't really reassuring because basically what she's saying is, yes, up until now, I believed that school shootings were fake, 9-11 didn't happen, and that Jewish space lasers blew up California. But that's only because I'm incapable of separating fantasy from reality. So let's do the right thing and let me go back to making laws. Also tonight, serious questions are swirling around the youngest member of Congress, an up-and-coming Republican with an increasingly high profile. He is considered a rising star in the Republican Party, but Congressman Madison Cawthorn's past and the political persona he has cultivated is littered with dark allegations. Cawthorn faced numerous allegations of sexual harassment while attending Patrick Henry College in Virginia just four years ago. Caitlin Coulter went to school with Cawthorn and says she was taken on what he called a fun drive. His MO was to take vulnerable women out on these rides with him in the car and to make advances. Cawthorn asked her about her purity ring and her sexual experiences. Coulter says she felt something was off and shut down the conversation. He got really upset and he whipped the car around and started going back to campus at 70, 80 miles an hour on these one lane roads. Um, and it was it was really scary. There was a lot of sexual innuendo, Lee Petrie told CNN. It got really uncomfortable walking to and from class. He would yell out, are you ready to take that fun drive today? Oh, damn, that guy doesn't sound fun at all. This guy was apparently sexually harassing women while driving like a crazy person. It's like if Mario Kart let you play as Harvey Weinstein. And just to be clear, this wasn't just making a few people uncomfortable. No, Cawthorn reportedly kissed women by force, put his hands up their skirts, and pulled one girl onto his lap and put his finger between her legs. In fact, it got so bad that RAs at the school started warning students to stay away from him. And you know you're doing something wrong when you're in the same category as STDs and alcohol poisoning. But the question you may be asking is, who is Madison Cawthorn? And how did he go from college creep to congressman creep? Well, let's find out in another episode of Fringe Watching. (music) One year ago, Madison Cawthorn was not expected to be the next congressional representative from North Carolina but he narrowly beat a more established conservative in the Republican primary by falsely smearing her as a never Trumper. Because you see, at this point, never Trumper is the worst insult that you can say to a Republican. It goes expert, Prius driver, and then never Trumper. That's the Republican version of the N-word. You never Trump don't you call me. You take that back while you don't use that word on me. Okay, but you don't like Trump sometimes. But what really propelled Cawthorn into office was his compelling personal story, even if it wasn't 100% his. Fresh questions about his own account of the car accident that left him wheelchair bound in 2014. He was my brother, my best friend. He, he, he leaves me in a car to die in a fiery tomb. Bradley Ledford, Cawthorn's friend and the driver of the car, telling the Washington Post that Cawthorn's accounting of the accident was not true. Cawthorn's own parents undercutting their son's story too, saying the driver of the car rescued him. The accident went on to be the core part of the narrative Cawthorn weaved about himself as he ran for Congress. He planned on serving his country in the Navy 
with a nomination to the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis. But all that changed in the spring of 2014 when tragedy struck. But in this 2017 deposition related to the accident obtained by CNN, Cawthorn admitted that he was rejected by the Academy before the accident. So, this guy got rejected by the Naval Academy, then got into a car crash, and then claimed the crash was why he got rejected? Well, you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, you blame the lemons for everything and you hope no one checks. And look, man, this is a horrible thing that Cawthorn experienced but it's tragic enough on its own. And it's also genuinely inspiring that he came back from it, which is probably why it's so weird that he felt the need to lie about things like his friend abandoning him to die. I mean, dude rescued him from a car and in return, he threw him under the bus. And once people began digging into the rest of Cawthorn's story, they began finding lies everywhere. For instance, he claimed he turned down Princeton and Harvard. That was not true. He claimed to be a successful business owner, even though his supposed investment company reported zero income and had only one employee, himself. He even claimed repeatedly to be training for the 2020 Paralympics, despite never being an elite athlete. Something an actual Paralympian compared to, quote, a kid saying they wanna play in the NBA when they're on the fourth grade basketball team. End quote. Which would obviously be ridiculous. I mean, no fourth grader could play in the NBA. Except maybe for the Pistons. I mean, they they need help. So, Madison Cawthorn has basically lied about every major event in his life. And he's lucky that he's in politics because there's no other career where you can be caught lying that much about your resume and still be allowed to keep your job. So, instead of attending Princeton or Harvard, Cawthorn went to a conservative Christian college where he led a squad known on campus as the Douche Crew, which is impressive, especially when you think about how much competition there is for that name on a college campus. You know, it's like working at a hedge fund and being known as the guy with the coke problem. But after earning mostly Ds, Cawthorn dropped out after only one semester to go and see the world. This 2017 Instagram post from a visit to Adolf Hitler's vacation home in Germany, the Eagle's Nest, where Cawthorn refers to Hitler as the Führer. Posting the vacation house of the Führer. Seeing the Eagle's Nest has been on my bucket list for a while. It did not disappoint. I'm definitely not a Nazi. Uh, I'm not a white supremacist. Okay, you know you messed up if you need to follow your Instagram post with, I'm definitely not a Nazi. I mean, nobody's posting kitten pictures like, just to be clear, I definitely think the Holocaust was bad. Meow. And it's not even that he visited Hitler's vacation home so much as how he wrote about it. He called it the Fuhrer's house. I mean, that's an extra level of respect when you're using Hitler's preferred pronouns. I mean, he even included the two dots over the U. What is that, the the umlauts? Yo, that takes effort. I don't even know how you do that. I think you need to buy like a special keyboard. I can barely find the colon. Where are you finding the umlauts for Hitler? But maybe the strangest part of this post is that he said, quote, it did not disappoint. The only way to make this post worse was if it did disappoint. Just got to the eagle's nest. Bummer, not that Hitlery. So this was a little embarrassing, but it didn't stop Cawthorn from getting the ultimate stamp of approval. Where's Madison? Where is Madison? Is he here? here. Madison Cawthorn, a real star. You're going to be a star of the party. He rose to national prominence and then gained national attention at this summer's Republican convention. When I'm elected this November, I'll be the youngest member of Congress in over 200 years. And if you don't think young people can change the world, then you just don't know American history. George Washington was 21 when he received his first military commission. Abe Lincoln, 22 when he first ran for office. And my personal favorite, James Madison, was just 25 years old when he signed the Declaration of Independence. Yes, that, my friends, is incredible. Or it would be if James Madison had actually signed the Declaration of Independence, but he didn't. I guess Cawthorn is so into lying that he's padding other people's resumes now? I mean, sooner or later, this dude's gonna get his alternate realities completely mixed up. And let's not forget Thomas Jefferson, who left me for dead in that car accident. And please, don't get me wrong, this isn't the biggest deal in the world. 
In fact, I'm kind of impressed that Cawthorn picked the one founding father who didn't sign the Declaration of Independence. Look at those signatures. Look at all those signatures. They were passing that thing around like an office birthday card. And so, Madison Cawthorn made history as the youngest member of Congress ever. And he celebrated this milestone in American democracy by immediately trying to undo American democracy. My first act as a member of Congress will be to object to the Electoral College certification of the 2020 election. If you don't start supporting election integrity, I'm coming after you. Madison Cawthorn's coming after you. Everybody's coming after you. Get on the phone, call your congressman, and feel free, you can lightly threaten them. Yes, just a few weeks before riots has stormed the Capitol building, Madison Cawthorn was telling people to lightly threaten their congressman which I guess is when you say you're gonna kill a dude and then throw in some funny memes just to balance it out. But you know, in many ways, the Republican Party couldn't have asked for a better star to push their lie. Because unlike the Paralympics, this is something he's actually been training for his whole life. So that's Madison Cawthorn. He claims the election was stolen, lies about everything in his life, and has dubious opinions about Nazis and an alleged history of sexual assault. What I'm saying is, as soon as this guy can get a fake ID saying he's 35, oh, my friends, he's gonna be president. What makes a legendary journalist? Gravitas, honesty, eyes so piercing they can give you a nose ring? No, it's adaptability. And no one's better at that than Tucker Carlson. Man of a thousand faces, but also somehow only one face. Tucker Swanson McNear Carlson. His father was a journalist and U.S. ambassador to the Seychelles, a popular vacation spot for people's money. His stepmom was an heiress to Swanson Frozen Foods, a heritage he still pays tribute to with his trademark frozen facial expressions. He has a brother, Buckley Swanson Peck Carlson. You don't really need to know anything about him, but how about those names, huh? Others might have tried to downplay their wealth, but downplaying was never Tucker's style. Well, I'm, like, extraordinarily loaded just from, like, money I, you know, inherited. I've never needed to work. He didn't need to work. We could be living in a world where Tucker Bronson McChad Carlson isn't on TV every night. But luckily for America, that didn't happen. After college, Tucker took his talents to journalism, rising to prominence as the liberals' favorite conservative. Everyone liked him. He seemed normal and unwhite supremacisty. Tucker Swan Lake McNordstrom Carlson took that palatable conservatism to CNN and PBS, eventually becoming the perpetually bow tied co host of CNN's Crossfire. There, he helped steer cable news away from meaningful discourse and more towards people shouting talking points at each other, like a housewife's reunion. It was going great until one day when a Comedy Central extremist infiltrated the set and wrecked havoc. Your partisan, um, what do you call it, hacks. Now, this is theater. I mean, it's, it's it is, obvious. No, no, it is. How old are you? 35. And you wear a bow tie. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. So... After surviving that ugly attack, Tucker made the difficult decision to move on. Desperate times called for desperate Tuckers. So the butterfly emerged from yet another cocoon and flew to MSNBC, where he was both respected and likable. Someone you could definitely trust, like Matt Lauer. You know who was pals with him back then? Rachel Maddow. It's weird to see now, like Emperor Palpatine going to brunch with Baby Yoda. Carlson's low-rated MSNBC gig didn't last long, but his personal brand only grew stronger. He was not going to rest until the world knew all 36 of his names. Having flunked out of TV twice, Tucker Seamus McDuck Carlson began rebuilding his journalism career by working with one of radio's most respected broadcasters, Bubba the Love Sponge, where he was able to channel his inner shock jock. I love women, but they're extremely primitive. If you're talking to a feminist, and she's giving you, a, well, you know, men really need to be more sensitive and just, you know, actually, you just need to be quiet and kind of do what you're told. I'm not defending underage marriage at all. 
I just don't think it's the same thing exactly as pulling a child from a bus stop and sexually assaulting that child. The rapist in this case has made a lifelong commitment to live and take care of the person. So I, it is a little different. Iraq is a crappy place filled with a bunch of, you know, yeah. semi-literate keep primitive very, monkeys keep in Canada. I called them our retarded cousins. She just does seem a little <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you said it. I'm just agreeing with you. One thing couldn't be denied. Tucker Carlson said all that out loud on purpose, knowing other people would hear him. Plenty of people would be proud to coast on calling women the C-word, but not Tucker. In 2010, he remade himself yet again as the public intellectual behind the new website, The Daily Caller. Soon, he was ready for his most important role yet, Fox News superhero. Tucker Vanderpump McRib Carlson was home, and this time, he became something completely new a man of the people. Democrats have become the party of the elite professional class, eager to lecture you about open borders, global warming from their gated communities. The most privileged people in our society shouting down at Trump's voters. Yeah. Damn you working class Americans, you must need to be quiet. Tucker, you went to the elite schools of this country. I did, I what did. We should focus and that's why on I know it's a scam. Major- It was the performance of a lifetime, an aristocrat who spent his entire adult life working in media, acting as if he had just crawled out of the coal mines and sat in front of a TV camera. And Carlson wasn't afraid to use his new clout to uplift the most needy among us, people who hate immigrants. Our leaders worship multiculturalism because all cultures are equal, except they're not all equal. Our civilization is superior and we need to defend it. Latin American countries are forcing demographic change on this country at a rate that American voters consistently say they don't want. We have a moral obligation to admit the world's poor, they tell us, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Isn't it crowding your country the fastest way to despoil it, to, to pollute it? Tucker Swamp Thing McGruff Carlson was like a beautiful reverse Statue of Liberty, telling everyone to get their tired huddle masses out of here. But any Fox News host could hate immigrants. In fact, most of them did. So Tucker upped the ante. How precisely is diversity our strength? Do you get along better with your neighbors or your coworkers if you can't understand each other? or share no common values. White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax. This may be a lot of things, this moment we're living through, but it is definitely not about black lives. And remember that when they come for you, and at this rate, they will. We have every right to fight to preserve our nation and our heritage and our culture. In the skull of the African here, the area associated with submissiveness is larger than any human or any other subhuman species on planet Earth. Tucker was on fire like a cross on a black family's lawn. But as 2021 began, he was once again restless for a change. So Carlson put on yet another hat, this time made of tinfoil. Democrats rigged the election in front of all of us and nobody did anything about it. And what about this vaccine? Why are Americans being discouraged from asking simple, straightforward questions about it? Questions like, how effective are these drugs? Are they safe? And by the way, how much are the drug companies making off this stuff? The Biden's affection is totally real. It's in no way part of a slick PR campaign devised by cynical consultants determined to hide the president's senility by misdirection. (laughs) Not at all. Their love is as real as climate change. A little nuts? Well, maybe. But unlike the moon landing or a 44-year marriage, you can't fake ratings like this. And while yes, at least one person did sue for defamation, a judge dismissed the case on the grounds that any reasonable viewer knows that even things Tucker says are facts are not actual facts. So whatever the future holds for him, one thing we know is that Tucker Severus McFly Carlson will do it with a smile or whatever's going on there. QAnon, the biggest thing on the internet since that time Kim Kardashian's butt was thirsty. It has been all over the news, social media, and this weekend, QAnon supporters even held demonstrations in cities across America. But what is QAnon? Well, let's find out in another installment of our ongoing segment, If You Don't Know, Now You Know. If you know anything about QAnon, you've probably heard that it's a conspiracy theory. But the truth is, it's more like a political cult built around a conspiracy theory and then crossed with a big book of word search puzzles. And if that sounds complicated, well, wait till you hear 
what they believe in. For believers, Q is an anonymous government official who posts classified information about a covert battle between the president and a malicious ring of celebrities, political elites, and the so-called deep state. This anonymous poster, Q, was giving secret clues about the coming quote, great awakening. The central theme here is that Hillary Clinton and many of the world's other politicians and celebrities are members of a murderous child sex ring. Hillary Clinton, Oprah Winfrey, Tom Hanks, and others eat children in order to extract a life-extending chemical from their blood group. They believe that a group of military generals recruited President Trump to break up this conspiracy and end their control of the government and the media. Donald Trump, in the QAnon view, is going to save us from this in a moment called the storm. His tweets are misspelled for a reason. Ooh. When he does Kaveve and the smocking gun, it's all code for what he's telling us. Okay, I want whatever these people are smocking because Trump's typos are a secret message? Man, I wish people were this forgiving when I did stupid shit. No, you guys don't get it. When Trevor threw up at that party, he was showing us it's what's on the inside that counts. But look, this guy's also not wrong. President Trump's tweets are misspelled for a reason. And that reason is he can't read. Now look, if Hillary and Oprah were eating children to live longer, I would be horrified because that is such a waste of magic blood. You feed those kids to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, people, priorities. But there's no way this conspiracy theory is actually true. And look, I believe a lot of crazy shit, okay? I believe the TSA confiscates all our lotion in order to secretly sell it back to us at Walgreens. I believe possums are just dogs without makeup. I believe no one has actually ever broken up with me. They've just all been abducted by aliens. But this conspiracy theory is crazy even for conspiracy theories. I mean, set aside everything else. You're telling me Trump is doing something heroic, but instead of taking credit for it, he's keeping it a secret? That is the most unbelievable thing I have ever heard. Plus, if you're wondering how it's possible that Trump can be leading the fight against the pedophile ring when he was friends with Jeffrey Epstein for years, well, according to Q, Trump has been undercover since the 90s, which I believe. I mean, if there's one thing Trump is known for, it's his famously long attention span. So how did this insane theory take off? Well, partly, it latched onto fears about the real phenomenon of human trafficking. Partly, it fed off ancient anti-Semitic tropes about elitists who drink the blood of children, but mostly, it was just the good old internet. QAnon first emerged in the months after President Trump took office, starting on fringe internet message boards before spreading to social media. The pandemic has only made things worse. And so these people are just there all day. Facebook groups have grown exponentially with QAnon. In just four months, membership of the biggest public QAnon groups rose by 700%. We saw a lot of groups who were wellness communities, people who were interested in alternative health. People would, uh, the algorithm would sort these people together with the QAnon people. They would say, oh, alternative health, maybe they're into anti-vax. If they're anti-vax, maybe they're into Donald Trump. And within one or two clicks, people would go down these very bad paths. Yep, that's how the shit always goes on the internet. It feels like at this point, the entire purpose of Facebook is to funnel everyone towards the craziest conspiracy theories possible. Because people will join a group about cycling and then five hours later, they're like, Hillary Clinton is a mountain goat, people. She's an actual goat. And it's not surprising that the pandemic turned out to create the perfect conditions for people to get radicalized. Some people joined QAnon, some people ordered Pelotons and neither of them will shut up about it. This also shows you how much the internet is ruining our brains. When Shakespeare was quarantined during the plague, he was like, maybe I should write King Lear. Now people are sitting around during coronavirus going, I wonder if I could prove that Tom Hanks has sex with the devil. Either way, starting from the swampiest parts of the internet, QAnon gradually picked up followers and eventually grew into a major online movement. And it hasn't seemed to matter that many of the things it predicted over the years just never came true. Early on, they were claiming that Robert Mueller was secretly investigating and going to indict the cabal of Democratic leaders and that President Trump was secretly working with Mueller's team. President Trump has secretly created a police force, by the way, to arrest them and force them to wear ankle bracelets. The belief is that somehow the late JFK Jr. is alive and helping Trump clean up the deep state. 
Nearly all of these clues, including that Hillary Clinton was arrested, turn out to be wrong. But the batting average doesn't seem to matter. You can present them with evidence. You can demonstrate how the predictions have gone wrong. And they don't seem to care. It's just again and again that Q is bigger than anything that they can be presented with to the contrary. That's right. It doesn't matter how many of Q's outlandish predictions fail to pan out. It never seems to have an impact on the movement. And that, my friends, is the classic sign of cult behavior. Once you're invested enough in something, you will make any excuse for its failures. So please, don't be looking for logic here. That's not how cults work, okay? Cults don't follow logic. They follow whatever the cult tells them. That's why you always see cult leaders go so quickly from the sacred aliens have chosen us to weird news, guys. The sacred aliens told me I should bang all of your wives. <laughs> I guess it must be for our redemption or something to go somewhere. I, I pick her. So, thanks to this religious fervor, QAnon took over the internet. And it would have been fairly harmless if it had just stayed on the internet, you know, like Momo. <laughs> that thing was a joke. That was, that was weird. But the scary thing about QAnon is what happened when it jumped from the screen to the streets. This is not just a bunch of online crazy talk. It's dangerous in real life. The FBI says QAnon and their many conspiracy theories are a potential domestic terrorism threat. The North Carolina man who shot up this DC pizza restaurant looking for non-existent pedophiles believed in similar theories. On more than one occasion, people believed to be followers of QAnon have shown up, sometimes with weapons, in places that the character told them were somehow connected to anti-Trump conspiracies. In June, a man armed with a rifle and a handgun drove an armored vehicle to the Hoover Dam on what he said was a mission from QAnon. Q on followers have allegedly been involved in a foiled presidential assassination plot, a devastating California wildfire, and an armed standoff with local law enforcement officers in Arizona. In July, a 24-year-old man was charged in the shooting death of a reputed mob boss. His attorneys argued he was motivated by QAnon. Written on his hand in the courtroom were QAnon symbols. You cannot be serious. Can you imagine being a mob boss and you get whacked by a kid from a message board? Not a rival, just some random kid. You'd almost want them to lie in your obituary and say you were a snitch. But this is insane. QAnon people are out in the world doing real things, shootings, hijackings, kidnappings. Of all the bad advice I've gotten on the internet, nothing ever came close to making me murder a mob boss. The worst advice I ever got was to use toothpaste to get rid of pimples. But I ate the entire tube of toothpaste and all I got was a tummy ache. The pimples didn't go anywhere. And even with sporadic real world violence, it might be tempting to dismiss QAnon as just another lunatic fringe. But it's actually becoming pretty close to mainstream. In fact, there are roughly 50 Q supporters who ran for office in the Republican Party this year. And it's almost certain that one of them is actually going to be in Congress next year. Although maybe that's a good thing. Nothing will prevent them from getting anything done better than being in Congress. Congress the only people with a lower approval rating than QAnon. And then, of course, there's President Trump. He's the big hero in all these QAnon stories, so he could just shut this down quickly by saying, guys, none of this is true. Q isn't a real person. And besides, if there was a sex group with all the most important people in the world, you know I'd try to be in it. Yeah, that's what he could do. But instead, he has come out and declared that QAnon are some very fine people. At President Trump's rally in Tampa, the image was hard to miss. The letter Q on signs and t-shirts. We are finally putting America first. The Trump campaign even included QAnon signs in an ad. President Trump has used his own social media accounts to promote QAnon followers and content nearly 200 times. President Trump praising supporters of the bizarre QAnon conspiracy theory. He told reporters he heard that QAnon followers are people who love the country and him. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate. But I don't know much about the movement. Uh, I have heard that it is gaining in popularity. And these are people that love our country and they just don't like seeing it. Well, at, at the crux of the theory is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. If I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it, I'm willing to put myself out there. Yeah, you see, it doesn't matter that QAnon is a dangerous cult and all of their beliefs are complete fiction. President Trump is on board. 
Trump's approach to QAnon is basically the same as that Backstreet Boys song. He doesn't care who you are, where you're from, what you did, as long as you love him. And honestly, people, nobody should be surprised that Donald Trump is embracing QAnon. Donald Trump was always going to embrace QAnon. The surprise is that he's president. So that's QAnon in a nutshell. It's a violent delusion that spread from the internet to prey on vulnerable people and infect an entire political party. Or maybe I'm just saying that to throw you off the real story. And if you don't know, now you know.